to a title and he wants another trip. Greg Haugen has always been a boxing nomad of sorts. He would fight in anyone's backyard for the right price. In 1987, the price was too steep as Haugen lost his IBF lightweight championship to Vinny Pazienza, and it happened in Pazienza's hometown of Providence, Rhode Island. The Pazienza-Haugen rematch was staged eight months later in Atlantic City, New Jersey. This time it was Haugen who seized the moment. He clearly dominated the Pasmanian Devil for 15 rounds. When the cards were tallied, Haugen was once again the champion. In 1989, Haugen took his title to the home of Colonel Whitaker and left empty-handed. After 387 days off, Haugen returned to the ring in March in Las Vegas, showing little ring rust as he stopped Memo Cruz in 10 rounds. Haugen's opponent is 26-year-old Bobby Nunez. Last August, Nunez was on his way to a meeting with Hector Macho Camacho, but was instead sidetracked by Rowdy Welch. We'll see both of these men tonight. Locker room of Bobby Nunez, only knocked out once. That came way back on July the 10th of 1987. Nunez with a 17-9-1 record and 11 knockouts fighting out of Sacramento, California. Now, Nunez is coming off a loss to Rowdy Welch. He was supposed to fight Hector Macho Camacho last summer. Earlier, Dave Bontempo asked him about not fighting the Macho Man. It, it didn't really affect me too bad, you know. I was waiting when they when they said time was ready. I was ready, so it really didn't affect me none. I was ready for Camacho. I was training for him and everything. So then they threw in Roddy Welch against me. And you thought your preparation was fine going into the Welch fight? Right. I was in shape. I went the full ten rounds. Um, I pushed every round. I was on top of him. I I made him run, you know, run backwards or anything. He kept running corner corner trying to get away. The point you lost in that fight surprised you? Yeah. I mean. He said I was hitting after Bell. Um, he said I hit low. So he took two point, three points from me, took from me in that fight. And that's what cost me a fight, I feel. I had him, I chased him from round to round, I chased him. Tough fight to lose a fight. Yeah, sure was, especially my hometown. That was really bad. Now what about tonight, though? You come in here maybe as a bit of an underdog, but with some opportunity. Yeah. I, this, to me, is like a championship fight. Even though he's not a champion no more, to me, it's like a championship fight. When I, if, when I do beat him, the doors would be open to me. They'd be, I'll, be, I'll be up there in front. I'll be up there wide open. How do you have to beat him? Well, he thinks I'm going to fight him. He thinks I'm going to throw punches out real wide, you know, throw big bombs. I'm not. I've been working on my boxing, um, short punches in the middle, up the middle. I'm going to hit him. And that is the man he's going to hit or hopes to hit, Greg Hauger, the former IBF lightweight champion of the world. He has worked as a sheet metal molder, He's worked on a road construction gang. He's worked as a phosphate miner in Florida. He is one tough guy. Greg Haugen lost a 12-round decision in the IBF title to Pernell Whitaker. He took nearly a year off before coming back into the ring here on Sports Channel America against Memo Cruz on March 12th. Dave Bontempo takes a closer look at Greg Haugen. To make money as IBF lightweight champion, Greg Haugen had to be king of the road. That meant fighting before the Vinny Paz Maniacs in Providence. Haugen fought well before losing a bitterly close decision, one that many people thought he would have gotten somewhere else. Haugen got his location away several months later. In Atlantic City, he dominated the rematch. Haugen fought more aggressively. His jab exploited Pazienza's open defense. He made it easy on the judges because of adjustments that he'd made. I learned that I didn't want to fight in Providence again. <laughs> you know, I thought I won the first fight. Uh, I really did, but, you know, I, that's the judge's opinion. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to get in uh, a little better shape mentally and physically for the second fight. And I felt that, uh, you know, coming in the second fight, I had to take the fight away from him early and, and just go out and box him instead of getting caught up in the slugfest with him. And, you know, because he had a little faster hands than me and, and he kind of stole it with the, you know, the, the phony flurries inside. And, you know, th that impresses judges. So I didn't give him a chance to do that from the outside the second time. So I think uh, I fought a lot smarter fight the second time by boxing. Against Bobby Nunez. That was the only time that... Haugen had ever been knocked down in his career and his loss to Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. Channel America's Pro Boxing Tour, our main event from Bally's in Reno, Nevada. Ten rounds of junior Tony the Tiger Lopez from Sacramento. 
He came up with a big victory over John John Molina a couple of weeks back in a stirring fight. The Tiger, Reno, Nevada. Here are the key numbers. Greg Haugen at 5'6 and a half. Nunez at 5'7. Haugen a half pound heavier, 139 and a half pounds to 139. Nunez with the one inch reach advantage at 68 67. And Haugen at 29 years of age. And Nunez is just several days away, six days away from his 27th birthday. So technically, he is still 26. There is Greg Haugen at 29, the former IVF lightweight champion with the nickname of Mutt. And here with the introductions, our ring announcer, here's Ron Garrett. Let's get ready to get bad. Sports Channel America main events and Don Shargan Promotions present our main event tonight. On the road to the championship, in the red corner, from Sacramento, California, with a record of 17 wins, nine defeats and one draw, 11 knockouts, weighing in at 139 pounds. Let's hear it for Bobby Double Barrel Nunez. And his opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, with a record of 24 wins, two defeats, and one draw, 11 knockouts, weighing 139 pounds, Greg Haugen. Haugen. Your referee, the popular Mills Lane. All right, we've already gone through all the instructions in the dressing room. Any questions over here? Any questions over here? Let's get it on. Come on. Mills Lane setting the tone for tonight's main event. And our graphics were correct. And just to correct ring announcer Ron Garrett, Greg Haugen has 12 career knockouts. We get that out of the way. Our producer is Rick Belmont, director Frank Belmont, Bob Papo, along with Dave Bontempo. Glad you can join us here on Main Events, presents Sports Channel America's Pro Boxing Tour, round number one. Nunez against Haugen. It will be interesting to see which style Greg Haugen decides to use tonight. He's taken the lead with his jab as he did against Benny Pazienza. He's also fought in countering situations well many times. Nunez wants to press the attack. And let's talk about the referee a little bit, Mills Lane. He will let these guys mix it up. He'll make them fight out of clinches, and he'll actually instruct them to fight more if things slow down. He'll pick up the pace in the fight. Every referee with a style, and there's latitude in how you handle that. Mills Lane wants to force the action. Yes, sir. How do you do? And what that will do is you see the fight progress. It will not allow a fighter to take advantage of the long breaks and the clinches. This is Nunez's first fight of 1990. This is his third appearance on Sports Channel America. On May 15th in Sacramento, he scored a 10th round knockout over Jorge Hernandez. And as we mentioned, he lost to Rowdy Well. And he's been coming on. The 17 and 9 record includes a 9 and 1 burst over the last couple of years, and that's after he made a management change. Very important part of this game. The wrong manager can get you taking fights on short notice, not at the right weight. But Nunez has made the changes and he's bounced back. You think Greg Haugen sometimes gets uh, the wrong label? I mean, not being given credit for his counter-punching ability and the way he can create some angles and score? Sometimes he's been typecast as a straight-ahead brawler, and it's not right because he is versatile. He really is good at taking what's offered. And at times, he uses the jab well for a short fighter, and he showed some good defense right there. There were a couple bombs that he just took away from Nunez with his gloves. Nunez said he was going to come up the middle, and so far, he's been shooting wide shots. 
Round number one scheduled for 10. Final 10 seconds to go in this first round. Bobby Nunez in the stripes against former champion Greg Haugen in the blacks. Back with more from Reno after this timeout. There is a slight nick on the nose of Greg Haugen as we start round number two. Haugen in the black trunks, Bobby Nunez in the striped trunks. These are junior welterweights. Haugen asked his corner between rounds, am I Nick? And they said no. A little deception in the corner, or they didn't see what we did on the side of his nose. No, well, they went to work on it right away. A lot of psychology in this sport. Kind of get the feeling that Haugen was feeling out Nunez a bit in round number one. He didn't really open it up. He was trying to see what Nunez would bring him. He predicted that to us at the way in this morning then he would adjust off of that wow. Nunez is going to try to bolt through him that would be his best style well Haugen's corner told him in between rounds that he can use his jab to the head of Nunez all day it's wide open let's see if he follows what they said there it is it is right so far if Nunez comes forward and doesn't jab himself that will be there for Haugen but so will other punches like the body attack See Haugen just keeping Nunez away with that stiff jab. All left there. Haugen likes to take a step back and fire a counter. It's a quick, subtle step. He likes to let the opponent come forward and then shoot off a good shot. This is an important fight for Nunez because he's fought well but not done well in his big fight. Nunez answered it back with a right, but Haugen got the better of that exchange. Haugen sent a message there. Remember, this is one of Haugen's hometowns. He's got a lot of them. Not a bad idea. Everywhere you go, you have a little bit of an edge. Well, he's fought on the road so much in his career that places are starting to all become home. You know, after Haugen put together a pretty good effort against Memo Cruz in his first fight in over a year, well, he didn't show that much ring rust. Does he have to put forth now an even more impressive effort against Nunez now that he's in his second fight back? In the long run, he does. For his confidence, he also does, but for the short term, it may not matter that much. The Pazienza fight is made, provided he just doesn't lose. That's what he has to avoid. But from a momentum standpoint, a fighter wants to build on the fight before. Let's pause for a regional break. Algan and Nunez come to the end of round number two. Round three underway from Reno, Nevada. Greg Haugen on the black, Bobby Nunez in the striped trunks. Nunez corner saying, you've got to throw first. You've got to get off first. That's what he wants to do is try to force Haugen back. Otherwise, he'll play right into Haugen's hand. Haugen is versatile. He doesn't have to be the counter puncher. He can take the lead, as you see there. And if you let Greg Haugen settle into a rhythm, on the lead, he'll be dangerous, too. Right now, he is in a good rhythm. Picking his spots, scoring his points. And Nunez is bewildered. Nunez fires back a left of his own, but the points tally up in Haugen's favor. And that bomb by Nunez just missed. Haugen picked it off. Good movement by Haugen after his power shot. And that punch by Nunez was short. Now, when you talked before about the label on Haugen, he's showing you the versatility here. Moving laterally, punching straight ahead. Haugen just continuing to pick a spot. Nunez just missing. He's short by a little bit in a lot of his punches. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. 
Ogden doing a good job after Nunez misses, digging to the body, moving away. Nunez has to land his jab a little bit more to set up what he's trying to do. And Haugen just peppering away at Nunez's face with the left hand. That has been the effective punch. When Haugen is on, he'll eat you to death with the little weaknesses that you have. If you give him the jab, he'll use that all day. If the uppercut is there, he'll do that the entire fight. And the fans begin to chant Haugen. And now some of the fans coming back with Bobby. It's been well, a very good round for Haugen. When you fight on the road, you like to take the crowd out of it, but Nunez has not succeeded. Well, a lot of Nunez sparring partners and stablemates fight out of Sacramento, and Reno is a place they fight often as well. Haugen continues to score, and Nunez is hurt. Big finish for Greg Haugen at the end of round number three. He rocked Bobby Nunez as Nunez stumbles back to his corner. Hey, tired. You're not tired. Don't you think you're, 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 you're not tired. You just get intimidated. Hey, he's not better than you. Eh? You got to give him some. Eh? Let him feel what, what you got. Hey, hey, my, my goal was to the body. Come out with the finish with the left hook to the head. But don't let him stop. You got to be first. Let's take a look. And Haugen doing excellent work at the end of the round. Nunez confused, and Haugen lands four left hooks, getting off the mark each time. And they're a veteran doing what he has to to exploit the opening. And had he had another 30 seconds, it would have been bad news for Nunez. Haugen was in an excellent position here to knock him down and probably would have done so with more time. And that's the way round three ended. We start round number four. Greg Haugen taking control here in this junior welterweight bout. So far, Nunez just cannot get his hands moving. Haugen just a little bit quicker and infinitely more accurate. Well, now we may find out a little bit about Nunez's heart. You heard him at the end of round three tell his corner, I'm tired. They tried to tell him, no, you're not, you're intimidated. Well, we'll find out what it is. They made a good point. Nunez is close to Haugen and he's missing. And then he's covering up as if he's expecting something bad to happen, and thus he's bringing it on. And Nunez looks like he'd have some pretty good pop if he could keep his composure and get the shot off. But when he's missing, he's clamming up. A lot goes into that, too. Uh, Haugen's experience. He's making Nunez miss more than Nunez usually does. Haugen, a real pro. Shaping up for his third fight with Vinny Pazienza. They've had two very good fights, and they'll fight on NBC on August the 5th for the third time. And, you know, this could have been a fight that he could have looked past a little bit. Being at the Pazienza fight was made, but he was smartly intent on looking for the long term bringing his entire act together and bringing momentum into the Pazienza fight. Just past the midway point of round four. Now Haugen moving in again, and Nunez appears hurt. Haugen adept at staying within his abilities, maybe as well as anybody in the game. This kind of a style is ideal for him, somebody in front of him. And the left hand just continues to pummel Nunez. Nunez losing his balance. I really don't know if he's going to last much longer. His right leg buckled there. He's being outclassed here, and he's being outpunched, which is what he was supposed to specialize in. Haugen has just been dynamite with that left hook and jab. 
But when you go up in class, you take the shot. You've got to find out where you are in your career, and Nunez is finding that Haugen is on. Closing seconds of round four. It's scheduled for 10. But will Nunez last that long? We've got six more rounds to find out as the fighters head to their corners at the end of round four. Okay, very good. You got a good jab. Will you get your right heel up a little bit? Just spring like a polo. Greg Haugen ready to go. You know, when you talk about that Pazienza situation and Bobby Nunez trying to shake the cobwebs loose out of his corners, we start round number five. Uh, both fighters really made names for themselves with those first two bouts. Pazienza is now the recognized fighter with the Camacho fight, whereas Haugen has never gotten that popularity. And he had to take the long way up because he wasn't near that East Coast publicity capital. But he moved himself up. He was in six-figure territory before Pazienza. But the name of Pazienza helped Haugen earn more money. Now Haugen talking to Nunez a bit. And you could just tell. I mean, Haugen is such a tough guy. And history shows it. He can sense that Nunez is intimidated. He is in a rhythm right now. And it's a good feeling for him. He seems like he's getting everything back. The jab is there. The movement is there. Combinations, punch sequence. He's getting back on top of his game in a way that Greg Haugen hasn't really in the last 18 months or so. You know, programming, though, we're talking about as he ends a Haugen three on Sports Channel America's Great Bounce. We'll take a look at the first two fights later in July. They were excellent matchups. And one of the uh, two of the last 15 round warriors, too. Yes, we have our Guayo Pryor, too, and Leonard Hearns, one, and much, much more on the great fight series on Sports Channel America. When they talk about fights making fights, Pazienza and, uh, and Haugen fed off each other. They were interesting to the public. They had some real enmity and hatred for one another. Oh, Nunez rocked again. He could go here in round five. Answers back with the left, but does not phase Haugen. And just to put the finishing cap on that, pass into Haugen, their third fight gets closer and closer. This is the last roadblock for Haugen. Well, at this point, it has not been much of a hurdle. Other than round number one, where Nunez looks somewhat effective, it has been all Haugen. And Nunez is on very wobbly legs. His right leg buckled again as he tried to plant. Good example of the power Nunez doesn't have there. He landed a right hand, not much on it. But if he stays in this fight and doesn't get stopped, he should obtain his second wind and perhaps take one run at Haugen. Now you don't want to let a guy who's taking a big beating, if you're his opponent, you don't want to let him stay in there too long. You just never know. Well, referee Mills Lane has not had to ask Greg Haugen for action. He has been non-stop. And scoring as we come to the end of round number five. This one is scheduled for ten. I repeat, scheduled for ten. Look at the wide open space there for Haugen with his jab. And he exploits it three times in a row. There's a veteran. Jab twice, left hook over the top. Always thinking. We start round number six. Nunez in the striped trunks looked like he was going to go a couple of times, especially in round three, but time ran out in the round. What you're seeing in Greg Haugen here is the reason why it's often wise to come back slowly. The first fight, he got the ring rust off. This is a good confidence booster for him. Now he's gotten into the groove of this fight. It's becoming extra batting practice for him. He's doing a lot of things well, and this will help him in his next fight. You know, Nunez has landed some clean shots, but just no steam behind him. And now there is a nick under the left eye of Nunez where there is swelling and blood is starting to come down. Nunez just cannot keep his hands up, and he has lost some speed. But now being hit has brought out his fire. But Haugen shakes his head and says no. And now Mills Lane will have the ringside position look at this cut. It is pretty bad. And now there is a timeout. Well, because it was under the eye, Mills Lane wisely let it go on. Over the eye, a different story. 
but the sight of that blood brought Nunez back. Sometimes a fighter gets cut, realizes he's got nothing to lose, and just unleashes with fury. Well, fortunately for Nunez, it is under the eye, so the flow of blood goes down the face rather than in the eye. No butt was ruled. That was from a punch. Well, they say a hurt fighter is the most dangerous, and right now Nunez is hurt. We get another timeout from Mills Lane. And the ringside position will take a look. Only the referee can stop the fight in the state of Nevada. The ringside position cannot. And sometimes they'll get a recommendation from the doctor, and actually in a situation like this, they may just try to patch the fighter up a little bit, think in the long term. But it's a difficult situation here for Nunez. And that's the kind of thing that even if it won't distract his vision, can only get worse oh. as time goes by. Now we're going to get a time, and they're going to let him continue, and Nunez is a mess. But he says he's okay, so that answers the question about the heart. It is under the eye. And that's a borderline situation. It gives Mills Lane another reason to stop the fight if Nunez seems like he may not want to go on, but Nunez wanted to. And Haugen is now turning it on. Oh, and Haugen teeing off on the cut. Oh, and Nunez answers back, and he rocks Haugen. But is there enough steam left in Nunez? He's taken so much punishment. Look at that left hand by Haugen, still on the face of Nunez. We come to the final 10 seconds of round number six. We will watch them work on the left eye of Bobby Nunez. Lots of work to be done. Greg Haugen took a good look at it. There you can see it. The face of Bobby Nunez, a mess. Anthony Lizama will handle the cut duties. Now the ringside position will take another look. This thing may get stopped. He's got to stay on top of this guy. The combination is inside and finish with the left foot. Mm -hmm. You got you to you keep his, his right hand busy. Yeah, you got to keep his right hand busy. Okay. the last minute. Huh? You shouldn't. Give me one more. 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Give me one more. Give me one more. Give me one more. Okay, that's it. I'm all right. Mills Lane is ending the fight. The ringside position cannot stop the fight, but he advised Mills Lane that the fight should be stopped. And he strongly advised him, and Mills Lane did not go against the wishes of the doctor. Nunez was calling for one more round, his corner was as well. But I guess if you look at semantics, Mills Lane said to Nunez's corner, the doctor says it should be stopped. Really, you can't go that way. Well, not according to the rules, but he's trying to be play the compassionate role and there's always that borderline way you know which way do you want they gave him a chance in the sixth maybe looking for the puncher's chance he should have taken a shot in the next round we but are going to take a timeout here on sports channel america haugen and nunez it was a tough one greg haugen the winner we'll hear from haugen and more after back to reno nevada valley sports channel america's pro boxing tour Bon Papa along with Dave Bontempo. Greg Haugen gets his 25th win, his 13th knockout. And a left hand right there may have caused the nick on the face of Bobby Nunez. There were so many left hands, and could be that one right there, a little hook to the head as well. Haugen was so effective with that left hand. And the cut is there. There was a lot of swelling, and it burst open, and it just got worse and worse in round number six. And Dave Von Tempo is standing by in the ring with referee Mills Lane. Dave? Okay, Bob. Mills, uh, your opinion versus the doctor's opinion here. What did you see? What did he say? 
Well, the cut was beneath the eye. It was deep, and it was long. It was beneath the eye, so technically it's not as bad as being above the eye, but the kid was getting shellacked pretty good anyway, and the doc thought they couldn't go on. I don't think a referee ought to overrule a doctor on a medical question. The kid's eye is important, so I made the call. Okay, Bill, thanks very much. Okay. And that's the call for Mills Lane in this fight involving the combatants there. Greg Haugen getting a big win, and we'll be trying to get him over here for a couple words pretty soon. Get a look at the face of Bobby Nunez and really a very prudent decision that time made by Mills Lane. He just took a look at the situation and uh, he stopped the fight along with the doctor. And you got to like the referee not ever overruling the doctor. The doctor's the man with the experience. Greg Haugen is standing by with Dave Bontempo. Greg, uh, a nice performance for you tonight. Well, uh, I'd like to say thanks for the chance for main events. Uh, first of all, I'd like to dedicate this fight to my aunt who just passed away in Montana. And Hi to all my friends in Alaska and my thanks to my sparring partners. Bobby was a tough kid. I knew he was going to come in in good shape. Uh, you know, I think he made the mistake of not coming in uh, close or far enough in advance. He came in yesterday, and I could see that he was getting tired by the second round. And, you know, I just wanted to pick my shots, uh, work my jabs. I thought, you know, I could have punched a little better in combinations. But, you know, it's my second fight in 14 months, 15 months. So I'm happy. I got some good work, and, you know, I feel good with the performance. And you thought you were going to size him up over the first couple of rounds. What did you see, and how did it affect where you went from there? Well, I could see that he was uh, throwing some wild punches, so I had to keep my hands up a little bit. And he caught me with a couple of wild punches, uh, but I take a pretty good shot. So, uh, you know, I felt a couple of them. And, uh, you know, my corner, George, and Jim was telling me, just keep my hands up, you know, and, and watch for the dangerous wild punches. And, you know, he was winging with the punches, and any one of them could have really hurt me. So... You know, I just wanted to use my jab, and I felt my jab set up everything for, you know, come off with a right hand. And I was, he was open for a jab, jab, hook, hook. You know, I was doubling and tripling my hooks, and he was getting hit with it. So I just kept using it. Well, now the Vinny Pazienza fight looks like it's here. Any early thoughts? I'm coming at you, Vinny. <laughs> you best be ready, buddy, because I'm going to look better than I did in this time. And I had four, almost four weeks here, and I'm coming back for five more. So I think the altitude helped me, and... Uh, you know, it seems that me and Vinny put on good shows, and, you know, he's going to be in my way, and, you know, we're friends now, but when we climb in the ring, hey, take no prisoners, buddy, and you know it. So I'll be ready, and, you know, we'll shake hands and be friends after the fight, but, you know, he's trying to take something from me, and I'm trying to take something from him, so, you know, friendships okay. aside when we climb in the ring. Okay, thanks a lot, Greg. Congratulations, and we'll look forward to the Pazienza fight with you. Thank you, Greg. Bob? All right, let's take a look at this fight and how it ended up. Bobby Nunez with the cut underneath the left eye. And it looks like a couple of lefts ago it snuck in there. You could just see the blood. This is now near the end of round number six. And in between rounds, Nunez corner pleading for one more. But the ringside physician and referee Mills Lane said that was enough. The cut was very deep, and they stopped it at the end of six rounds. So Bobby Nunez, a tough loss. His 10th career loss now 17 10 and 1 he is standing by with Dave Bontempo Dave Bobby did you think you were going to get one more chance I did I wasn't bothering me you know it, I was okay I wasn't tired or nothing I I felt good I was just I got a slow start how bad was the uh, the cut and what was it caused by I we hit his inside I think it was third round or second round we hit his pretty good in a couple of times and I felt it's hitting his I felt me hit his head a couple of times too it seemed like you fought better after you saw the blood after you were angry a little bit. I wasn't angry. I got a slow start. I, I think I came out a little bit cold or a little bit tight. I wasn't intimidated by him or nothing at all. I just came out a little bit tight, and I was being too cautious. What happened? It seemed like you really couldn't get yourself going tonight against him. No, I, I just got a slow start tonight. I think I was being a little cautious because he's ex-champion and everything, so I didn't want to get sloppy with him because I knew he can counter right off it. He's, you know, he's an ex-champion and stuff. But I wasn't intimidated by him at that. I just got a slow start. I shook him out more aggressive on him. Okay, Bobby, thanks for stopping by. Tough call for you. And we'll take it now back to Bob Papa at ringside. All right, thank you very much. Dave Von Tempo, disappointing loss for Bobby Nunez. He got his shot at former.